Hello everyone. In this video, I will discuss about the instrumentation pertaining to supercritical fluid chromatography. We shall abbreviate it as SFC, supercritical fluid chromatography. The instrumentation setup looks just similar to that of the HPLC one, but there is a change where we have a SFC conversion module. So we can see the mobile phase, which is a carbon dioxide, the most used one, an SFC conversion module. The remaining setup is just similar to that of the HPLC instrumentation. Now let us look at the uh, each equipment present in this instrument. There is a cylinder. This is a CO2 cylinder and it will supply the vapor phase carbon dioxide at room temperature and the pressure is maintained about 55 bar. So such a CO2 will enter into the SFC conversion module. In this conversion module we can see a booster. It is a pump, booster pump, a chiller and a back pressure regulator. The job of the chiller is to cool the incoming carbon dioxide. So whatever fluid that is entering into this conversion module, it will be cooled with the help of this chiller. And this chiller, it will also cool the pump head of the booster pump. Here we can see the booster pump, the CO2 is entering into the booster pump through the chiller. The job of the booster pump is to raise the pressure of the carbon dioxide to about uh, 8 bar. And such a raised uh, pressure, carbon dioxide, which is a supercritical fluid, will enter into a binary pump setup. So here we can see a binary pump where the carbon dioxide is entering. Uh, depending upon the analyte system separations, modifiers are also required. So these modifiers are coming degassed. And once it is entering into this binary pump setup, both the carbon dioxide as well as the modifiers are mixed and they are pumped into the next auto sampler setup. So at this pumping point we also have some transducers which will sense the uh, electrical signals and it will try to optimize the pressure. So such a mixed uh, mobile phase along with the modifier is entering into the auto sampler. This auto sampler is a external loop auto sampler and this auto sampler it is equipped uh, with an injection valve which is considered to be the heart of the auto sampler. It is a six port valve and these six ports are uh, they contain a rotor, a stator, loop and also there are various connections connected to the rest of the chromatographic system. So the rotor it is connected as we said the rotor is connected to a handle and it will allow it to rotate through some degree so that uh, there is a shift between the load and the inject positions. So uh, the six valves as we said they are rotor, stator, loop and the three remaining fittings they are connected to the pump, column and waste. So here we can see one of the valves is connected to the column. So the mobile phase along with the modifier will take up the sample and it will enter into the column compartment. In this column compartment we can see it is equipped with an oven. There is an uh, I have uh, written it as R and L. These are uh, heat exchangers. One is called as a right heat exchanger and the another one is called as a left heat exchanger. So the sample along with the mobile phase is first entering into the right heat exchanger. And this right heat exchanger it is used uh, to precondition the mobile phase before it is entering into the column. So that mobile phase is preconditioned according to the optimized temperature and it will slowly enter into the column. As this mobile phase is entering into the column, the components get separated and whatever LUR that is coming out, now it has to pass through the left heat exchanger. So the temperature of uh, this mobile phase or the LU8, now this will be conditioned uh, with the help of this left heat exchanger. So this is called as a post column conditioning of the mobile phase temperature. Why do we require to post column condition the temperature? Because such a LU8 will it has to enter into the detector. So where the temperature has to be optimized. For that reason we are using the left heat exchanger. So once the mobile phase is post column condition, now slowly it is entering into a detector. The most commonly used detector is a DAD, diode array detector which is fitted with a high pressure flow cell. And once the mobile phase is passing through the DAD, diode, ar diode uh, array detector, slowly it is returned to the back pressure regulator. So what is the utility of this back pressure regulator? 
is the pressure will drop to the atmospheric pressure. So once the pressure drops, whatever fluid that is entering into this back pressure regulator, it will break down and it will break down into two different phases where the liquid phase is collected in a trap and the gaseous phase is allowed to exit into a fume head. So we call this is vented off. The detectors, is, well, the most commonly used one we said is a DAD. UV detectors can be used, refractive index detectors can be used depending upon the systems. DAD is a very low noise detector. So once the sample components are detected and the information will be processed and the data is produced. So this is how the instrumentation for supercritical fluid chromatography works. Thank you.